frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... G4 claims sponsor the show and we think they're absolutely brilliant. If you've been involved in a road traffic accident, it's not your fault. G4 claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with complete accident management support that you require. They'll recover their costs from the at-fault party and they'll sort you out for a like-for-like -like vehicle replacement. They will also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and it'll be returned back to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value of the car and they're going to get a big fat check for it. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge the at fault insurance direct. G4 claims don't cold call, they don't buy data, and once they've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing about the whole deal is Nicole and the team over there, they won't take on your case if they don't think they can help. So, if you've been in a road traffic accident or you know somebody that has, Get on to G4 Claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172. Get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims, not, not at fault claims, claims, made easy. easy. Let's welcome to Football Daft, a man who started his career at Hamilton before getting a dream move to Rangers. He then had loan spells at Shrewsbury and Hibs and now finds himself at Hull City. Greg Dockery, how are you doing, my man? Very well, mate. How are you? Very, very good, mate. I'm uh, delighted to get you on the show. How's, how's everything? Are you settling, doing well in, in Hull? Yeah, it's been good, mate. Um, enjoying it so far. Good bunch of boys. Uh, and we've started off pretty well, which is good and which we needed to do, so hopefully it can continue. Angie's took care of that dirty Leeds mob the other night, mate. That was a good result. Ah, fuck off. Fuck off. Penalties, if we'd have lost in penalties, that would have been the biggest robbery I've ever seen, man. Honestly, absolutely battered them, mate. Hey, listen, just watch your saying, all right, man? Just watch your saying. <laughs> Greg, how you, usually when we come on here, we end up asking everybody, how's your lockdown? How's your lockdown? We were just kind of joking that before it. You said you've been doing uh, 5K sprints and that. There's no point of... Asking folk this because it's all the football players do the same stuff in it. They run, but the big difference is on the park. How are you finding this? Nate, Nate crowd carry on. It's not great to be honest. Like obviously the boys down here, they had the last nine games of the season and um, with no fans, and and obviously uh, this is me kind of just getting used to it. But it's, it's a bit bizarre. I feel like sometimes when you maybe like if a team have a really good chance or something like that, or they're, or you're away from home and, and they're in an attack and say they miss or something, so it's just kind of like. You're like expecting, you're expecting a, like a crowd noise. Do you know what I mean? Like a, like a, even if it's missing, like an ooh or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Just to think like that, like. But it's just it's totally changed. Um, like a home and away it doesn't mean anything at the moment in my like. Do you know what I mean? Just total training game, like. I that's that's the thing. I was thinking it's like you, there's no advantage there at all no. anymore. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yesterday I was what um, I was in London, but I was wasn't in the squad. But I was just watching the how we're, we're playing West Ham and also that stadiums. Matt, like you know, it's got a lot of people say it's no good for the atmosphere, it's so big in that. But see, yesterday it was the, the most training like game, I think. About it just it was such a training game, like, isn't it? Because it was so echoey, everything. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, the stands just built for athletics in it, but it's like it's so far away as it is. But even the echo was even louder than normal. Do you know what I mean? It's hey, just, you see, if I see if that was a training game, you didn't train very fucking hard, did you? Oh, no, they don't know, mate. I know, but <laughs> I know, yeah. uh, it wasn't a great result, but no, but going to the no fans thing, like, it's just. I don't know, it's, it's almost, I think it's interesting for people to, when you're watching it for, you can actually hear on the pitch. Would, would you do, an insight to what a lot of players and that can say, but um, it's just, it's desperately need the fans back. But Greg, right, back to your career, mate, right? You started your youth career at Hamilton. Was that like a conscious decision to go to Hamilton because of the, the fact that they played a lot of <laughs> youth into the first team and that? Uh, no, well, it basically was, obviously you're playing at the time when I get picked up, was, uh, I was eight and it was just like you're playing with your pals you know what I mean you're playing you're, um, from a local boys club just enjoying it and then you uh, we kind of Hamilton hosted a tournament and their, their pitch and that and even at eight years old I remember just being it was absolutely buzzing because it was the first time you go in an actual stadium obviously that, even though it was Astro and it was only wee seven aside pitches or whatever but obviously it was a great 
brilliant day, brilliant experience and that. And, and then I was fortunate enough to be asked back and it was me and my best mate as well at the time and we're still close now. He, he came back as well. So we were going through and trimming them once a week and then it just kind of progressed. And, and my mum always reminds me of this. It was uh, the head of youth at the time, Frankie McAvoy, who was the, uh, who's now the assistant president. He, he sat as sat us in a room, so we're all 11, and we're like signing our, our contracts and that, oh, absolutely buzzing. And um, this was obviously the time, like the McCarthy's breaking through, McCarthy's breaking through, Brian Easton and that, he was going to Burnley. And then um, Frankie, he sat us all down, and we're all still buzzing that. And then he just said, so there's about, I think he was like, oh, there's, there's 20 of you in this room, or something like that. Um, but probably only one of you, two if you're lucky, are going to make it. And then obviously your wee guys, you're obviously thinking, that's me. But I remember my, my mum still, that sticks in her head, that straight away you're like, look, it's kind of like, even though yeah, yeah, like you're signing, but straight away you're told, like, the opportunity will be there, but it's going to be ruthless, do you know what I mean? Like, and to sell that in front of him, and to be fair, he was actually, he was actually right and out of that squad, do you know what I mean? So it's just like, and you, if you look at the age groups, the people that actually come out of the age groups, it probably is only one or two boys that actually go on to have a, a proper career. Mm-hmm. Which is just, do you know what I mean? But for Hamilton, straight away, like, on the under thirteens games and when you're going to your end of the season meetings and things like that and Billy Reed would be in the meeting sitting with you. Do you know what I mean? He'd know you by name. He would meet you, he'd introduce you to your mum and dad and all that. So it's just like as a club you can't want any more that you're sitting there and the first team manager sitting right there. You probably don't realise how big a thing that is. And he's they're watching your games on Sundays, they're coming, do you know what I mean? They're giving up their time. And then they know every youth player by name. It's like a proper well run family club and they still do it the same. Um and it's just that kind of feeling of wanted and you're, you just feel so welcome and you can just go and play football and enjoy yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. That, that was a great time at Hamilton Aki's, wasn't it? Really, that, like that MacArthur and McCarthy kind of era. Mm-hmm. And you, you always felt that the young players that were coming through were going to go on to, to bigger and better things, and a lot of them did. So yeah. it, it's the perfect sort of club <coughs> to, to start at, I think. Yeah, well, you, well, you can look at uh, Max Adair the other night, and it was the two... Yeah, you the took your words out of my mouth, it got highlighted right after their game. And then the two of them, obviously, they both won the FA Cup. And then the same like that. I mean, for Hamilton, as a like, you watch probably how many boys have been young boys are watching Match of Day. Do you know what I mean? It's a ritual when you're that when you're younger coming through to watch Match of Day. And if you're at Hamilton at the time, I mean, how many dads are going to be sitting there going, like, Look, son, there's your, like, do you know what I mean? That's what I, you want. That's, that's exactly true. Yeah. It's true. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's bizarre. It's, it's actually incredible. And hats off that, like, to them too, they've worked so hard and they've got to that position. But just obviously, just even wee things like that, just it's the household thing I'm actually today. Just it's still brilliant for the Hamilton as a club to have to see their two boys like that. You started with your professional career under Alex Neil, Greg. What was he like to work with? Brilliant. Um, ruthless. Do you know what I mean? He, he uh, but in a good way, like he, he, re- he got the best out of everybody and um, everybody respected him for it. Um, and he, he told you how it is. Like mm-hmm. uh, he, was, he was my 17s manager and then he was my 20s manager. And then he was the first team manager, do you know what I mean? So like I say, when you talk about the kind of progression, like he knew he knew all the boys and the youth. And again, they're, come, they're playing, he'd been sometimes playing a Saturday, then he would, or he would manage the team a Saturday, but then they're getting up at, and they're coming up to Aberdeen on a Sunday to watch under 17s, do you know what I mean? Like that kind of, get inside the pitch so that it's, it spurs you on, do you know what I mean? It drives you on to, to do better. But yeah, to be fair, Alex knew was, was great with me. Um, and I really, I really love playing with him. Um, just that proper, work ethic of your work rate comes first but then the, foot, the football comes and he played a really nice good style of football and at the time I think Hamilton was the top of the league you know what in the SPL just beat Celtic right. I remember that I know I remember was that moving, you know what I mean it was, they were just taking everybody by storm like uh, just missed out on promotion and then went up through the playoffs and really so but then they totally took the SPL by storm man. and then just, just, just the way I style of play it was just so fast and just total possession football um, and I think his teams like that people ask me about him now down here um, and these, these teams are still to say the same thing, just total football as well, just total r- willingness to work hard and then you know, good football to follow. Was there any certain throws that took you under the wing? Just kind of yeah, to be fair, Darren, Darren, was, Darren was huge for me. Um, I know obviously he gets this kind of like hard man reputation on the pitch and he is, to be fair, probably a nightmare to play against. Um, but I, I mean, I'm full of admiration for him. He came into a Hamilton team at 27, Grafted his arse, like, really worked his balls off, got himself in incredible condition, and then ended up being a mainstay and captain in an SBL team for about three years. Do you know what I mean? That really drove the team on and his willingness to improve in that. But Darien, for like a young boy coming in, um, it was sort of me and Darien, and then you had Ali Crawford as well. But Ali was the kind of technician one that would do the nice football, me and Darien would do the work. But just to be things like if somebody said, hey, that was a bad tackle or 
Do you know what I mean? Like anything, Daddy was first there fighting your corner. Do you know what I mean? Like that, right up in the face. You didn't need to get involved in it. He would, he would take the heat for you. Do you know what I mean? And it was just you know when they had that that sort of backing on the pitch, um, and it, it worked. I feel like we had a really good partnership. Um, we were quite a successful Hamilton team uh, at the time, and had a good few scalps in us as well. Purely because I think from that that work ethic and that that kind of grittiness to just to win. Do you know what I mean? To try and to do well. But you, you established yourselves a regular under Mark, Martin Cannon, Greg. What was he like compared to Alex Neal and stuff? What was the difference with they two? Uh, I think Can, uh, Canzo was, I'd say, I wouldn't say Cam was not the word, it's just a bit more. They were, they were, obviously, they were actually really good pals as well, um, I think. Um, but they, they were different. Like They were probably different, but they got on so well because they actually are a bit different. But... Um, Again, same same football philosophy though. Um, they wanted to play football, do the things, do things right, work hard. Um, just the basics. Um, but I, I enjoyed playing. I really enjoyed playing under Canzo, and I think built up a good relationship with him. And obviously, he gave me the majority of the games in my career, um, which I'm obviously I'll always be thankful for. Uh, and he never got the credit that he deserved sometimes. And that's just. But I, I, touching back on when Hamlin were successful under Alex Neil, he came into a job that was really difficult. And you're taking over a, a team that's punching above the weight so much when they're sitting. That's what I'm saying. They're sitting in the top three, the SQL, or whatever, um, winning games. Then Alex still goes. You're not also losing a player, a uh, manager. You're losing a player. Then Kanzo's got to step up from the, the captain's job to the manager and the player manager. And it's different. It's difficult to find that kind of boundary of Aye. being somebody's friend and then being a manager. And all of a sudden, he's pulling people to leave them out. And and when you're you're, you're massively thrown in at the end. But obviously, I think it was a job that he, he did well and he, he took it. And like you say, kept his own, did did what he had to do. Kept his own elite. Um, and again, and had some good spells. One manager a month a couple of times. Um, one at Ibrox. Do you know what I mean? Again, I've touched on it just so. One at Easter Road comfortably. It's just so. It doesn't get the credit there. But Hamill fans, I think, because it was, they'd gone from so much success under Alex Neil. Um, and at the time under Alex Neil, and that, they were kind of riding, riding a little wave. And, but as the SPL got better and the SPL got stronger, with Rangers coming back in and other teams starting to strengthen, it did get more difficult um, under, for, just for Cancel purely because of who was in the league at the time. Mm-hmm. Greg, are you, see when you're playing at Hamilton and he's he's a playing at Parkhead and he's a playing at Ibrox, is that the buzz? Is that the games that he's he's really looked forward to because it's the big yeah. crowds? Is, uh, that, is, that, is that something that you did look forward to when you were obviously young and coming up? Uh, massively, like I think the best example is when, when Rangers were promoted from the Championship. The first game of the season was Hamilton at home on Flag Day and it was a sell it was at 12 o'clock kickoff and all that and I think when the fixtures came out, we were in Spain at the time, uh, doing a pre-season camp. It was just like, the fixtures are out, man. Look at the first fixture, everyone was like, buzzing, do you know what I mean? Like, Aye. what a fixture, that's why you're... And then it was like, don't get any better than that, do you know what I mean? So you knew it was going to be a sellout, you knew it was going to be, like, the atmosphere was going to be electric because it was like, a flag that I've had, and, and, it, and it was, obviously. Um, Sky Sports, first game of the season, like, even, like... You couldn't get much better than that to start the season and then end up getting a decent result. That was a well. fucking horrible day, Greg. Let's no kid on, man. That was uh, a horrible one, day. Uh, no, that's the one. That's the one. Joey Barton came out after it and said, "Oh, it's, it's a good point." And I'm oh, thinking, "Oh, what, man? I remember that? Point? Oh. You've just drawn it. You've just drawn it home. You have I know. Good point. You get any memories of uh, playing against Joey Barton? No, is there anything that sticks out for you? It was. It obviously had that persona, and that, but I mean, it didn't. It didn't. Did he do much? Off. It's not as if he was like mouthing off to you or anything like that. He Aye. just can't play. Did he remember, stop? remember he got money to match shot. that day? Mine he got money to match in the stadium that day. He never kicked the fucking ball. Can you believe <laughs> it, mate? That's what I mean. Can you believe it? But I was like, just but watching his interview, like I say, it's, I guess a good point against Hamlin at home in the first day of the season. Mm. Not really. I think they only, gave him, they only gave him money to match so they could interview him after it, didn't they? Oh, must have been <laughs> well, well, Shane told remember to get man in match that day. Okay, I don't, I didn't remember that. <laughs> yeah, but that's, but that's because you. Know, but Shane, okay, yeah, that's because you know he knows Shane fuck all the football. He's in the Ibrooks man and told remember to get man in a match. Fuck it, hell, man. Oh, oh, Shane. <laughs> hey, guy, I'm a fucking almanac, mate. All right. Hey, told don't get. Right. I know, told man. Just about a banter, mate. Calm down. Yeah. Your fucking, why am I getting that? <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that? Fuck you, man. Right, listen. Right, so anyway, hey, that's your, that's your whole Greg house again. <laughs> <laughs> What's your highlights of Hamilton then when you look back, mate? What sticks out in your mind? Uh, my last game, I think, was... Um, can I, to be fair, I don't think I could have ended my Hamilton career better. I think we... Uh, so it was the day before the winter break. Um, 
And so uh, we beat Motherwell three one at Motherwell, and I scored the the winner as well, the third goal. And I just remember like thinking that like we obviously battered them. And, and to be fair, to be fair, the Hamilton fans and the Motherwell fans, it is it is it like I said, people draw us the Lanarkshire derby not, but it is taking seriously. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is, they are nice. Motherwell fans and Hamilton fans. They do absolutely hate each other. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're properly passionate about that. And so it was just great to obviously win over there and just and literally, you know, you, you win that game. We scored. Oh, I had scored sorry. And, um, comfortably won and then it was like the next day going to Tenerife for New Year and all that so just the first winter break as well do you know what I mean just a good time like I think I, could, I don't think I could looking back now I don't think I could have ended um, any better but oh, actually, been, sorry so... I forgot another thing I, I scored uh, in the playoff final to keep us up um, to be United so I forgot there you go mate that was good too that was yes. good that was um, good see, see when you're, you you wrap up for that winter break when does the whisper start coming with regards to a move because I remember it was Palace were interested in you at the time obviously Rangers but when did you start to kind of hear the rumblings uh, I think it was it was on that um, I was on holiday mate, in, in Tenerife and, and I just it was, mate, it was bizarre I just started getting followed by loads and loads of Rangers and I must have went up from me that. I followed you enough <laughs> I, must have up that time. Time. I, mate, I must have went up from like a thousand followers to about five thousand followers within a week and I nothing like it just out of nowhere I was just like See my mates, what's going on here, man? This is mental, like just bizarre. And I was just like, got, I was quite bad at things. I was like, just kept refreshing my phone and that, like, and just kept pinging. And obviously, never experienced anything like that. And I was just like, this is nuts. And then ended up STV picked up and a story and all that. And then you're just like, was well, there any truth in it? And it just, but I think from it was like this New Year's Day, it might have been, and I'd already been sorry in Tenerife for a couple of days. And and then, but I didn't sign until right the end of January, so it was about right. three and a half weeks. Before I'd actually known it was it was interested in, so it was just long. Do you know what I mean? It was just an absolute slog. It took absolutely ages, man. Just but whether it, it was just on, it was off, it was on, it was off, and then you're trying to focus on playing as well, and it's just like you don't want to get your head hit by all, all angles. But then you're getting your mates are messaging you, who are Rangers fans and all that, and generally had no idea as well. And you're a Rangers fan, aren't you, Greg? For me, it was like, mate, and. Just think, if uh, walking past like in Tenerife and that, obviously you know there's quite a lot of Scottish people there and that, and and they're coming like randomly. I've never had people come to me before. They're coming. I'm at Siam Park and fan, like just random. You can see the Rangers towel and all that, and then I'm walking past and people stop me and all that. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. and actually, I, I mean, I came off that flight right. So the end of the week, and Martin Cannon was on my flight right, just by pure coincidence. And I got back to press week and I'm walking through the airport, and then and I was also I'd, I'd literally met in the baggage bit and we we're just chatting and that, and we we're walking right. And a fan came up, mate, and he didn't realise it was Martin Cannon, right? And he's like, ah, I'm, no, mate, I'm no kidding, right? And he's like, ah, he's on it, and he's like, hey, 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 can I get a picture on that? Can I get a picture on that? You come to Angels, you go to sign with Angels and all that. And then he's like, and he's on it, right? And he goes like this. And as he goes like that, he can see Martin Cannon in the camera, right? Because he's standing next to me, he's like, oh, hey, Martin, how you doing that? <laughs> and I'm like, and Martin's like, right, Greg, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> oh, see you later, mate. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it, honestly. Like, I was just, it was just warm, man. Like, something I'd never, obviously, ever been used to, but it was, it was for me, it was like, just wild. And I was trying not to think about it, because if, it, if I'd been thinking about it and it didn't happen, I'd have obviously been gutted, do you know what I mean? That's what I was going to say there. I was going to say, you must have been trying to keep your gas out of people a wee bit, just in case it never went through, but yeah. that must have been exciting as fuck. You know no, what I mean? It, it must, like, it must it have been. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. But then at the same time, you're work, obviously being respectful to Hamilton and... and for, the, for what I'd obviously been there for such a long time and I was never going to not be respectful to him. So I wasn't, I was fully thought also, yeah, and we had a few fixtures and and, I, and it was tough because I actually did get, leading up to the winter break, I actually did have a sort of an, an ankle and injury and I was thinking, right, get to winter break. And and um, it was actually and Ryan Jack, it was his fault because he smashed me in a tackle in November and I continually had this sort of injury, right? And it kept going, but I got through it, I got through it, I got through it. And then... Uh, the winter break came in and I came back and I was just kind of saying, look, this isn't, still wasn't right and I don't and And again, it was and nothing to do with the Rangers thing, but I was like, look, I've had a week of no doing anything, no running, no nothing, just swimming and that, trying to get it right. And it was still a bit sore. And then we played Motherwell again in the cup and then you're starting to get messy saying, oh, like, I've, I've down tools because I didn't want to play in the cup. And that would yeah. be cup time if I played for, if I got to Rangers and all that, which actually wasn't the case. But I genuinely was injured, do you know what I mean? And it was a bit like, and that was the first sort of, like, I'd gone from, a bit of, and it was it wasn't nice because obviously I had, I had such an affiliation with Hamilton, and then you get messages like that, and it was, and I actually couldn't have been further from the truth. I genuinely was playing for an injury for about a month, um, 
and I just uh, so happens that all the stuff in the media and all that was going about, and and I just I wasn't playing at the time, but it was purely an actual injury thing and not what people were thinking it was. So the big question is, Greg, man, when you do sign for Rangers in and you've got a first training session and it's all by where you've signed and all that, did you smash Jacko back in training? <laughs> no, I just wondered. <laughs> He's been there quite a long time. No, but it was, I think, I, I say it's fast, but it was like, do you know what I mean? Just a attack when a Jack came out worse on it. But um, no, but actually it was funny. Jordan Ross had actually smashed me in my first session, man. So it was like... Uh, the injury Martin, cell when he done it? Is that how he was out for so long? <laughs> Martin made it, known, he made it really known to the press. I was a bit weird as well. Like, was like, so I think... I just mean Jordan Ross. We just went shoulder to shoulder in one of them. He fell and then I scored. And then two minutes later, I got the ball back. And just a small side of the games, and he came and he, and he went, won the ball back. Great tackle on that. But I, I, was, I went flying in that. And then it was just kind of like... Um, it's like, oh, Mark Marty's giving it a oh, welcome to the Angels and all that. Like, you know, it was good ban on that, it was all good. But then he said it to the press and that, and the press, and then I did my interviews and that after the game, and they're like, oh, yeah, I hear you had a bit of a, an introduction to Rangers and all that. And I'm like, remember that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just kind of like, oh, yeah, ha, ha, like, yeah, yeah. As if, as if there's beef between them because we Aye. had tackles and training, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, just going uh, along, like, oh, yeah, 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 it was good. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, welcome to Rangers, ha, ha, ha. Like, it's, it's <laughs> But you see, I can remember, I can remember when you signed as well because was there no a deal that was there no talks that it might have been was it not a pre-contract possibly you were was that not the talk? But then you did actually sign in January. Am I getting mixed up? No, I think I, it was always a deal for no, you to go I in January know. kind of idea. Because I actually didn't know about this. Uh, you, you touched on the, the, the Crystal Palace thing. I remember doing an interview, um, the first interview I signed for Rangers, and they literally that was the first thing they said. They were like, "Oh, Crystal Palace came in at the last minute, and you like, what was your?" And I'm like. I genuinely... Did they fuck? No, well... You know, <laughs> honestly, I had, I had, uh, it was purely... Like, from, from when I knew Rangers were interested in me, it was like, that was it. And it wasn't even... And again, a few people, a few Hamlet fans are like, oh, I, he's, he's just done it. He sold his key up the river to purely go to sign with Rangers so he gets a tour. I was getting tweets like saying, oh, yeah, brilliant. You get a tour of Ibox for your family and all that. I hope it's worth it and all that. And I'm like, like see, when a club the size of like doesn't matter like it was a huge club it was a huge opportunity like and I learned I mean like regardless I was just like and it was actually the time and I know uh, like they just the Rangers were actually in a good run of form at the time as well I mean right. the day after I signed like after Florida or something like that wasn't it was yeah, that not after Florida, do you know what I mean so it was like a good actually good vibes about the club again um, and it was so regardless I knew when I was just like saying that was where I wanted to go but do you know what I remember as well when you signed? Because I'm sure there was a picture of you driving into Murray Park and usually kind of let players like kind of, no dingy the, the pictures, but you all like that, big fucking yeah, cheese all like that. Thumbs up. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> and I was like, this is class. It was yeah, brilliant. But looking back, I'm like, oh, cringe and shit. I, <laughs> I mean, again, oh, people know, like, it's just new. It's totally new. You go feel like, aye. None of that kind of thing, like no press outside the training ground. That aye. You're like, yeah, that things and you're just like, no, I, I knew the guy, I knew the photographer from that. So genuinely, like, he was a nice guy, kind of, I'm like, how are you doing? Like, he's like, hey, you know, hey, up, hey, so I'm like, hey. and then that was it, boom, on S, everyone, it's all over the place. And it was like, but the thing is as well, it was the most, like, it was the most well-known, like, Remember? before I did my medical, I think Hamilton were playing the day before, and the chairman came out and said, yeah, he's going for his medical and that the day, that, and it was just like, everybody knew about it, and I'm thinking to myself, man, like, biggest, yeah. biggest kept secret. And I'm, I, the, 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 I, the worst kept secret ever. Aye, that's that. I, and, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm lying in bed the night before, and I'm like, I'm not back too, that's all my hips and that, I don't know if I might feel this medical here, do you know what I mean? Like, you're just shitting yourself, like, everybody knows about it, and you don't want to, like, and I'm just, you start overthinking things, but it's just, I was, that was out of my control, like, there was nothing I done that came from me or my end, um, I think it because it just been such a long process and eventually I think to be fair to Hamilton they were a bit fed up with how it came about and, and it took so long to get what, what they were due which is fair enough um, but it's just yeah, so I was just going through like none of that till all of a sudden you're in the spot like I say like it's just it was just mad because it was the last signing in that window as well like for Rangers and it had been building up I'd probably been the first I think it was the first one linked and then the last one you actually signed in that and yeah it was, it was just wild mate Absolutely. but mate like what Obviously, like Cashinia's away, Marty's there. We've we've had a good wee bit of form. I played no bad, but obviously we know how it all went the rest of that season and how the club was kind of in a transitional period just before Gerard came in. When you went there, what was the dressing room like? Like, what was what was the morale like? What was everybody like? Did they know? 
what was going on, how much Celtic were ahead of us and all that kind of stuff. What was it like? Well, that's what I mean, mate. When I went, it was actually good because you, there was quite a few, there was about four, four of his new fresh faces in, like Russian mm-hmm. Cummins being his face, Cummins, you know what I mean? Good striker. And uh, Gossi had been, no, not a lot of people knew about him, but then he played in the in the Florida Cup and then started against Aberdeen doing well. Murph as well. Do you know what I mean? A Premier League signing. So I started, do you know what I mean? It was like, I'm joining a dressing room and at the same time I was like, that, like um, I'm all of a sudden like, I'm like, you're taking back. And then I'm, I'm sitting and sitting across from me is like uh, Kenny Miller, Lee Wallace directly across from me. Do you know what I mean? Like proper dressing room, do you know what I mean? Were they sitting together, aye? <laughs> no, I've only had to. <laughs> uh, and then you get a dressing room with Cranchard in it, Bruno Alves, do you know what I mean? Like these household names, do you know what I mean? Um, Remember Alves? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's just it was but it was good because we're winning. Do you know what I mean? Winning kind of breeds that, that thing. So I was joining at the time and then obviously the first few games you're just kinda of getting used to it and embedding in and but the squad obviously, like you say, everybody knows what ended up happening and that, but at the time there was really good vibes about the place. Um mm-hmm. it was a good January, February and then uh, I think you'd won about ten games on the spin as well. Aye. Did you play in the, the that, that old firm game? The, was it free two? Aye, uh, the Bayata, I mean Bayata got a big guy. Aye, aye. Yeah. Was that would that have been your first? Aye, so that was, that's still me. That's a... Was that the one at Ibrox where Winda scored? We well, I scored the oh, second minute. Yeah, it was wild. But that was just a, a, a I went to the toilet and missed that fucking goal. Was you, was you at Ibrox too, eh? No, no, I was in the house watching it, but right. I went to the toilet and fucking missed the goal. Come out oh. and I was like, I couldn't believe it. Rangers were one nothing up, and mm-hmm. I genuinely remember how Rangers were flying at that point, mind you. Mm-hmm. And it was like, uh, but they just, it was a signal, obviously, to look. You, you can see it in the end, Marcelo Morelos hits the post and it lands at Wayne's feet as well. Do you know what I mean? Just like, I and if that landed to him now, he, he's burying that in a heartbeat. Do you know what I mean? It's just at the time, it's just these wee things don't fall for you. And, and then can you answer just, me a question, but Greg, what was the goalie then? Ah, oh, <laughs> ignore him, ignore him, Greg, ignore him. Right, he's <laughs> fucking John. John, come on. Remember, this is called football daft. It doesn't need to be serious or anything. I don't laugh. I, laughed. I thought it was funny too. I thought it was funny. Oh, I, was <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what, what you were going to ask like, him. Greg, what about when Gerard walks in? What was that like? What was it like seeing Gerard for the first time? She's obviously. It's weird because you just got to go all of a sudden for this figure to use your manager. But to be fair, he's interview when he first he's interviewed him. He sort of Best conference the squad thing. when he first came in was was look he said obviously like and you've got him you've got Gary McAllister as well do you know what I mean you're, you're in the dressing room everybody's apprehensive it's the first day back it's um, but he walked in and he did his, his sort of meeting and he just basically said look yeah you might think that like obviously you want to do well but we want to impress you as much as you want to impress us it's, it's new for us it's new we're starting this project we're all in this like type thing and it kind of broke the ice a wee bit and then I think when we went to to Spain the next day, I think it was a really, really good, really positive camp. I think it really kind of they managed to embed what they wanted to do and what they were about, and and they're still to these day following that philosophy. So, was there a point where Gerard's in the door? Does he take you in for a meeting? And and like, what's your first sort of kind of one on one session with him? Like, well, how does that go? Uh, I will to be fair, so I think he quickly he quickly named. Um, because uh, Waldo was injured at the time, so he quickly named as well. He, he said Tav was going to be the captain, and that so he quickly put his marker down and stuff like that. And, and then he, the meetings were sort of like in groups, so it'd be a defenders group, your midfielders, and but you could see he was starting to implement these these things. And then he, Tav was just sort of easy guy, and he still is a guy we go to all the time. That Tav so he spoke to him about half hours, and but it was like um, like about saying the group it was more so more, more so groups. I'd say like group interviews, as in like right. you'd have midfielder meetings. Defender meetings, striker meetings, and stuff like that, rather than just speaking to everyone individually. And like, obviously, like after he comes in and stuff, you go to Shrewsbury, Greg. Was that, was it, was it the club's decision? Was it Gerard saying he wants to put you out in loan, or was it you saying I want to play football and I'm not getting the chance to up here? So, what, whose decision was it? No, it was, it was me. To be honest, it was like uh, I know I was, I was thinking, and I was just thinking of obviously they said I looked at the they signed obviously they signed Scotty Arfield and and then they signed. Uh, Jaria and Koulibaly as well and, and to be fair Jack was coming back from injury so it was like yeah we wanted to carry a big squad but I was thinking that would kind of stagnant you know what I mean I, I didn't really want it to think like oh this could, this could maybe in the long run kind of keep me down when I want to keep on improving to get to obviously to be in the plans and that and so it was more so me and, and, and being Shrewsbury was because 
the the chief executive down there. He's a Scottish guy, yeah, Brian Caldwell, and and I just he I knew they did got in touch with my agent as well. And there was, a, there was a few teams to be fair, and and I just because I'd gone from playing football, oh, I'd been fortunate to continue to be playing, and then he just he maybe he was a big part of me coming down, and he was like, yeah, we'll look after you here. It's a well-run club, and to be fair, them they were in the playoff final. Um, Aye. Season before I went, do you know what I mean? So I was thinking, well, and it was in the club lived up, lived up to everything I thought it'd be, as in like it was a really nice, well run club, great people, and, and they looked after me, and that's all I wanted at that time. And I managed to get, so the, the, to be fair, before I went, the manager was like, go and get 50 games, 10 goals, 10 assists, and that, that, that was it. That's what I went and done, do you know what I mean? So it was successful for me. I hope so. Did you do well down there, right enough? I remember when you moved down there, your name was in the paper near enough every week for Mary right. and Match or, or a goal or what you said, an assist. So, do you feel that, that that improved you as a player, your time down at Shrewsbury? Yeah, and I think that was obviously like Steam Rangers meant that when, sorry, when I signed Rangers in January, it was meant I was still, still in Glasgow, still in like Rangers training mode guy, I'm from mode guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's like I'm, nothing's really changing except the fact that I was, I was coming in, obviously. I was, wasn't driving past Murray Park anymore in the morning. I was literally turning into Murray Park. So it was just like still at home and that. So I thought, well, this is now it's an opportunity to go and, and just work on me, move away from home, um, just mature off pitch, do all that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Love yourself, do that, and just focus purely on football 100%. And the fact that it was just Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, literally non stop throughout the season, do you know what I mean? And it was just like, kind of build up your robustness to playing games as well continuously. Um, because in Scotland, it's, sometimes it's a bit stop start in Scotland. I feel I don't feel really have enough midweek fixtures. Um, and obviously, you're playing the same teams all the time. Um, so it was again just going into new environments, just coming out of your comfort zone. Uh, that was part of the thinking as well. Uh, you got player of the year down there, didn't you? Uh, so that was obviously, again, that was my spring as well for being on loan to get player of the year. It was, it was that Aye, that's a big thing, man. You must think that that sets you in right good stead to come back up and force your way into the plans. But you you moved. It was when you came back up. It was you. You then moved on to Hibs. Is that right? I well, obviously did pre season, and then the manager was saying like, I want to carry a bigger squad. They don't get a big enough strength and depth last year, and and uh, it was all kind of reliant on us getting. I remember like beating Legia Warsaw. Uh, had to beat Legia Warsaw to get through in the group stages and. I think a lot of people were kind of like, I think that obviously that game financially meant so much to the club and, and to get that European, to get the group stages again. And, uh, so it was all kind of like hanging around that. What was actually going to happen with maybe half the squad? If not, it was going to carry a big squad. If not, it wouldn't, just couldn't. It would have probably, probably been a very similar squad to what was the previous season. Um, you know, thankfully, obviously, we got through. And and uh, yeah, I had a good, good pre-season as well, leading up to that as well. When the manager was, he was like, no, I want you to stay. And again, they turned down few offers that came in the door so I'm thinking you know this is great this is obviously they want me to be here and now I wanted to be there obviously and I wanted to keep on I signed there for a reason to play um, but for what I just again had a huge squad and, and just it wasn't really to be honest I don't think it was it's just well, it's fact it wasn't really rotated that much um, and that's that's fine I, think I, I, you know what I mean you just got to deal with that so come January I was just thinking to myself I, don't, I can't really afford to miss anymore but I mean there was a bit Nine of us, I mean, eight and nine consistently that really weren't in the squads and that as well, that weren't making the bench. So it was, um, it was a strange time just because you're, you're preparing for games that you're kind of not involved in all the time and, and you're just getting, just kind of in that wee clique of maybe the eight, nine players that are in on a Sunday when the game's on and you're, you're running at training ground, you're watching the game at training ground. It's just a bit strange. You, um, do, you think, um, do you think he did favour the people that he, he was bringing in in the summer? And I think obviously managers have their signings, they have their style, and they, and they think. Um, so he persisted with them with quite a few of them, and it was frustrating. Did you yeah, know how certain players are suited to certain styles? And and and, and look, did, you and, did you chap his door a lot, Craig, and say, "Look, I want to be here." I mean, obviously, the old thing like you're a Rangers man, you want it, you want to make this move work, you want to play for Rangers. I can imagine you wanted to be a, a mainstay in that midfield. Did you chap his door and go, "Look"? I've just had player of the year down there. You impressed at Hibs. What's going on? Yeah, obviously, you, you do have conversations and um, and stuff like that. But again, it's like uh, it had to be realistic. And most for the for the majority of that time, from the summer through to the January, when I was there, it was the team were doing well. They were winning. Do you know what I mean? And you can't really. And I looked at the guys ahead of me. Do you know what I mean? And, and Davo was back. He was coming. He was getting better and better. Jackals had an unbelievable season last year. Scotty as well, buying in goals. Do you know what I mean? Like 
So looking across that midfield, it was really tough. And to be, and it was very really times where they, they, like one of them got injured. Do you know what I mean? Like there was very really a space opened up, and that's what you're kind of hoping for, and you're trying to prime yourself all the time just to make sure you're you're ready and fit if you do get that thing. But just it, it was a squad that was in maybe if that's down to the way like the medical team or the sports science team, and, and they were a, a robust fit squad and. And it just so happened that like there wasn't many spaces and opportunities uh, opened up, and but you kind of you get to a point where you think to yourself, you know, what I mean, like you can't you can't waste any more time, and it's. Um, I was thinking, well, I just turned twenty three, and I was like, yeah, I, I need to do, I need to play again, and then just reevaluate in the summer. How hard is that decision, but for yourself? Uh, right? but I think you know? I had to. Do you know what I mean like I touched on earlier? It does mentally it takes its toll. I think I ended up being a bit of a. Just I think. My mum says to me now, she's obviously she's like in the past few weeks, she's like, I, you wouldn't believe the difference in you. You probably don't realise just because I'm I'm playing regularly, and, and I probably don't realise. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just like a weight off my shoulders that, that I'm I'm doing what I've I've always wanted, I've dedicated my life to doing is just to play football. Um, and I think because it was Rangers, it was like, and I could see as well that it was affecting my and I, it was affecting my family, my friends that were not playing, and and, and they were just sometimes you could see that. Obviously, if I'm disappointed, they're trying not to show their disappointment, and it's like, and it's just kind of that eight or that. And do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're just like. I mean, I certainly know. don't underestimate it at all. Like, I can imagine what it's like being being young and you're the team that you support, and it's frustrating that you kind of get in the team. Definitely, I can imagine that being a a massive burden on your shoulders, man. man. But mm-hmm. that, but it is it's it is good to know that you're you're um you're you're doing well doing at Hull and you're. You're getting first team fit, but that is good to hear that you're kind of coming no, back like, around. Like, um, to be like, it's, it's stood me in brilliant stead. Like, I've learned through that spell that four or five months of you, I mean, you go right to maybe bits of your, your mind you don't really think you've been before, and it's, it was a total new thing. Me not playing that was the first time I'd experienced not playing, and it's just telling yourself that like, look, people go through so many people in the career go through it, and it might be the only time you do. Hopefully, it is. Do you know what I mean? But Again, I know for a fact I went in every day and, and I loved being in that dressing room. I loved the boys. I loved, and I felt part, I did feel part of it and I felt they respected me as well and they respected that every day I trained to my man. And to be fair, and Gerard actually said that when I spoke to him loads of times, he was like, look, he's like, he said, I don't have an answer for you. He said, I genuinely like, don't give me any reason to not, um, which is also is a tough one to take because I'm thinking, I'm like, well, what, what can I do? Do you know what I mean? Like, he's like, I trained well and he's like, he's like, I'm just, I'm hoping to get an, you're hoping an opportunity comes from that. But again, like, the players in front of me were good players, and I'm, I'm honest enough to know that. Um, they're seasoned pros, and they were good, and they were they're in their prime. Um, and it just so happened. It's just unfortunate that that was in front of me at the time, because obviously it's like you say, it's, it's what it's the move I'd always wanted, that, and it is disheartening, and it doesn't really sit with me well how it ended up. But I think I had to go and take control of my career again, and that's how this is where I'm, I'm down here, and, and I'm really enjoying my football again. Aye, mate, you're, you're a football player. You need to be playing football. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You need to be, man. It was as well, like, see when you go to Ibrox and that, like, and obviously it's, the support for the fans is incredible and, and it's brilliant, but when you're going to the lounges before the game and all that and, and, and they're asking how you're getting on and, and it's just, Asking it's the same shit, answering the same shit every week. I know, it's not even that, it's, it's brilliant because it's like, you know how much you're, you're like, right, you're sorry, that, but right. it's the same thing. And what it be on, like, you're like, like, what are you going to think of the day? What do you think the score's going to be and all that? And what's been happening in training and all that? And then you can, you do see, like, I, I totally get it. People look from the outside and they go, Oh, he's not involved again. Do you know what I mean? Or, or I'm going up to the lounges and all that. Like Craig Dockett's here, and then I can see the fans like, "Fuck, he was up here two weeks ago." Do you know what I mean? Every day we'll go and get me on a go and go get me tab. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, that's the way I was looking at it. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's just stupid shit like that. And that's probably not the case. But at the same time, I'm like, that's how I was looking at it. And you know what? I didn't. I just didn't want to be that. I was like, it kind of the sort of the cheerleader type guy. Do you know what I mean? You know what? Yeah. How far do you think that team can go in? Win the league this year? Oh, 100%. There's no reason why they can't. And um, Aye, There's one reason why they can't. Selic. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, that's a good... That's now we've, we've got a... a <laughs> you learn from them. <laughs> if you learn from mistakes, and everybody knows what is at stake this year, but it's the same. And, and both sides this year, I think, there's humongous pressure from both teams. So it's who's going to handle the, the pressure the most. And it's consistency is going to be a huge one, I think. And that's where Rangers maybe faulted last year. Who is the big characters in that in that dressing room? Greg, who's well, the kind of... Obviously, Greg, Greg are, um, Goldson, Tab, Jacko's a big one as well. Um, Scotty, Dale, do you know what I mean? But, like, I think I was watching uh, St. Joseph, uh, not St. Joseph, Rangers, 
Lincoln Redemps the other day, and it was funny watching the commentary, man. You can hear McGregor going off his head at people, do you know what I mean? Like a fag. <laughs> well, that, that, that's, hey, that's what missing. That's what I, I said. Uh, I mean, but then that's what I'm seeing. The fans can now, you just can hear that. But that's, mm-hmm. that's every day in training. And I know the gaffer's touched on it and all that, but it's brilliant. Like that can, that's not just from him, like that's right across the board, but that's just obviously, you can hear him pretty clear. But that's in the dressing room. See, like, you look at Goldson as well, he's the same. He's the demand, the demands of training, the demands of. If a slack passes there, if it's, it's ruthless, but it's like, and it has to be, it has to be, everything has to be fucking on the ball, like, no fucking out. You can't, you can't afford any, any mishaps. Is there any, like, when you were there, and, like, maybe Morelos has been going through one of these mad times, was there anybody that just took him with a scruffy of the neck and went, like, fucking give yourself a shake, wee man? Eh, maybe behind the scenes, I don't know, but a few people, like, obviously, I think, I, I, I admire Morelos a lot, to be fair, from what he's came from, I mean, came from proper poverty, went to Finland at 19, do you know what I mean? You go from Colombia to Finland, like, I, I think people forget that, he's, he's looking after his family, he's got his foundation that feeds thousands and thousands of ch- uh, kids all the time, like, and people just kind of rub that off, and, and it's just a bit, and obviously he can't go in it, in Glasgow, it's, it's, I think it is hard for him in Glasgow, because he cannot, he's only a set of people he can trust, but obviously, like, I'm not saying that like, he doesn't, maybe a few times he's got himself in the wrong situations, but, um, I think it's just, Maybe that's just sometimes people. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just it's the media up in Scotland, man. They just absolutely verify them for. Yeah, it's honestly, just, man. It's yeah, actually, actually, when I mean, you take nobody ever talks about the like the, the foundation type things that he does, and and, and he's, he's goal record as well. I mean, his goal record is unbelievable. He, he's seen mm-hmm. just now. He's scoring all the time. He always scores. He always gets chances. He might miss a few, but he always score. So, Greg, you played for Scotland at under seventeen and under twenty one levels. Is that am I right in saying there's talk of you switching? Are you just to like Republic Ireland? No. John, where are you? That's what I was going to say. I was going to go, John, John is letting us know, John tell us before the show that fucking you are I think, he's just, I think he's just seen your surname and made that fucking... No, there was still, no, no, no. When I was... At the time, there was a... When I was doing well at Hamilton before I got my move, there was I wasn't included in a squad and then it was picked up and, and it was... Um, and I think it was magnified because McCarthy done it. Um, and it was like, he obviously made that switch yeah. from Hamilton and stuff like that. But I remember it saying at the time, like I, I said at the time, but it was more so a thing. So I was like, I think there was a game at the Scotland 21s where it was the same game as Ireland Scout was at the game or something like that. But no, there was never any contact to that. And I remember at the time I was saying, well, look, you never ever know. But it was just maybe one of those ones to see if it would help me get in Scotland. <laughs> and it did. I mean, I got into the Scotland one, so. Producer yeah. John's just talking a lot of shit, really, but I need That's one of his Wikipedia things that he's pulled off the internet. Greg, Greg, honestly, mate, thanks for taking the time out to join us, mate. We really appreciate it. But before you go, mate, right, every week on Football Daft, we want to put our guest football knowledge to the test with our 90-second quiz. You up for it? Right, right, let's go then. Oh, he's sitting up straight, sitting <laughs> up straight. Here we go. Are you ready? Slow apparatus. <laughs> at, at the top of the leaderboard, we've got John Sutton, who's on 15. Then we've got Mark Wilson and Keith Lasler tucked in behind with 14. Our well, good doctor, Kenny Dukart and Kevin Harper on 13. We've got Barry Ferguson on 12. Other selected scores include David Templeton on 11. Lauren Shankland on 7. Peter Lovincan's on 3. And the strongest man in football, Scottish football, that is, David McCracken is at the bottom of the leaderboard with one. Is there anybody on there you want to beat? Aye, uh, Peter Lovingcrans. Need to get one. There we go, mate. There we go. <laughs> right, producer John, you put 90 seconds on the clock. I have indeed. Are you ready, Greg? Right, go then. There we go. What are the home colours of Morton? Uh, blue and white. Which player currently holds the world transfer record? Uh, Mbappe. Name one of the Hibs scorers at the weekend. Uh, Drew Wright. In what month and year did you make your senior debut? December 2013. Which two clubs were fined this week for breach of COVID protocols? Uh, In Scotland. Hamilton and Livingston. Who is the only Scot to currently manage an English Premiership side? Uh, David Moyes. Which player has just moved from Aberdeen to Nottingham Forest? Scott McKenna. How many goals did you score for Shrewsbury? Ten. What's Queen of the South's nickname? Pass. Can't pass. Ah, oh, fuck <laughs> it. What Scottish League Two side have a stand called the Norway Stand? Elgin. Which club is Lee Miller, Lee Miller, co-manager of? Oh, 
How many Scotland under 21 caps have you got? Three. Who do Celtic play this weekend? Hibs. Which player have Rangers received their biggest transfer fee from? Uh, oh, I don't know. Sorry. The latest Sorry. All or Nothing series features what team? Tottenham. How many appearances did you make for Hibs? Eight. What is the name of Stranar's ground? I've, a- I've asked it so he can finish. What is the name of Stranar's ground? The uh, Stairs Park. Something. Right, do you know what? Here, we've got a problem here, John. Greg did say pass a couple of times, but at the start of it, I didn't say you're not allowed to pass. So right. he's allowed to do that. That's Aye. fine, I'll let you have that. <laughs> the I, room can, room. I know that the, the, the... Do you know why I said Hamilton and Livingston for the Covid one? It's because it instantly came in my head when it said Hamilton got in trouble for... He did a pylon celebration against Livingston and then you get positive results. And I know it's not, it's... And I know it's, uh, it's Aberdeen and, and Celtic. Aye. Aye. It is. Um, well done, Greg. Go through the wrong answers. Um, world transfer record at the moment is Neymar, 198 million to Paris Saint-Germain. Um, Aberdeen Celtic, you knew that one, so you said it. Queen of the South are called the Dunhammers. Um, no, 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 they're called the Dunhamers. 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 Okay. Dunhamers. Okay. Dunhamer. Too many, too many, too many M's. Here's that almanac coming out again, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Scottish League two side that have a stand called the Norway stand, Stennis Muir. We always get a Stennis Muir question in here. Uh, how many Scotland under 21 caps have you got? I've got written down here four, Greg. Nah, Greg's right. Greg's right, you've got to give it. Right, Steve, don't worry on that, that can make a big Aye. difference. Uh, the player that Rangers received the biggest transfer fee from was Alan Hutton, was it nine odd million that we nine went it was, for? Aye. Um, but apart from that, mate, everything else right. So you're just missed out on the, the leaderboard, but you're on 12, mate. Oh, so, you beat Loving oh, Well done, mate. Well done. Well Quadrupled his score, have <laughs> <laughs> Get in there, pal. Greg, Greg, that was brilliant, man. Thanks very much for that. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you, on, Thank you very much. Uh, good, good luck down, uh, down south. I'm sure um, you're going to fucking... You'll, you'll nail it down there this season, mate. man. Go on, Enjoy uh, your down there. Good I'm luck. I'm excited for you, mate. I really am. Uh, I appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much, and thank right. you for your team and asking me going in that, honestly. Ah, uh, no bother, Greg. Thanks very much, pal. Right. Audio Frontier.